This is Dave, and I'm here with Ethan, and together we are Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast, episode 148 Inch. On this episode, Weird Al Yankovic's hilarious longtime keyboard player, Ruben Valtiera, returns to the podcast as he prepares for 27 weeks on the road for the unfortunate return of the ridiculously self indulgent, ill advised vanity tour. <laughs> It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al Podcast. It's a podcast about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al Podcast. Seriously, the whole podcast is about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al Podcast. You don't have to listen, but we're glad you are. Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al Podcast. Aloha, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Dave and Ethan's 2000-Inch Weird Al Podcast. We are so glad that you decided to join us. Yes, and we want to thank everyone for sharing your amazing feedback on last episode's interview with Perry Grip and Steve Sherlock of the band Nerf Herder. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Hopefully everyone has had the opportunity to pick up their new single, Born Weird, featuring Weird Al and Dr. Demento. And hopefully everyone has scratched and sniffed the sweet, sweet smell of hot dogs. You know, Ethan, what you just said would sound really odd to somebody that does not listen to our podcast every week. Well, Dave, I guess that's just one more reason to tune in the minute our episodes drop. Uh, Anyway, we have a lot to get to, so let's jump right into... Oh, okay, I guess that sound means we have a message on the 347 Spatula Hotline, the official hotline of Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast. Take it away, intern Frank! Dave and Ethan, hello, this is Ajax from West College Corner, Indiana, and I just got done listening to episode 147. Let me say, you have really outdone yourselves on this one. I've been a huge Nerf Herder fan since way back when they opened for Weezer, and I have to say, a huge thank you for having Stephen Perry on your show. I can't even begin to describe the wave of euphoria that swept over me when I heard two of my favorite people being interviewed by two of my new favorite people while talking about my favorite band on a show dedicated to my favorite artist. Oh, it was great. And thanks. Thanks for really pressing them to dish on the new album they're dragging their feet on. Like, come on already. Clap's a ticking. Anyway, Dave and Ethan, keep on doing what you do. And one day, I will journey up to Burrito Burrito to Burrito Burrito, my Burrito Burrito. I'll rave about you! Wow, thank you so much for that call, Ajax. Yes, we love that you enjoyed Perry and Steve, and we also cannot wait for them to finish that next album. Come on, guys! <laughs> yeah, come on, what's taking so long? You know, we really appreciate your support, and we look forward to you burrito burritoing your burrito burrito one day. Ah, that reminds me. This week's episode is brought to you in part by Vegan Burrito Restaurant Burrito Burrito in Troy, New York, home of the two-pound double wrapped in a quesadilla Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger in Albany, New York. Come on down to Burrito Burrito and Burrito Burrito your Burrito Burrito or hop on over to Wizard Burger for mouth-watering loaded, dare I say, beefy vegan burgers. From Troy to Albany to Uranus, Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger feed the hungry with out-of-this-world plant-based real food Always vegan style. Visit burritosquared.com and wizardburger.com to order ahead. Okay, barring any unexpected wacky noises or sound effects, it is time for This Week in Weird Al Related News. Ah, fudgesickle. Just do the news. Filming continues this week on Weird Al and Eric Appel's masterpiece, Weird the Al Yankovic Story. Alert listeners have shared with us several rumors and spoilers from the set. Now, while Ethan and myself personally love all the rumors and spoilers, and we encourage our listeners to keep sending them in, we also want to respect our listeners who wish to remain spoiler-free as well as respect the vision of the filmmakers. So unless news about the film is shared by an official source, such as Weird Al, the director Eric Appel, Roku, or the like, we likely won't be sharing it publicly on this podcast. Now having said that, we're really happy to share with you where you can find those rumors and spoilers yourself. 
it's like when Batman was like, I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you to Ra's al Ghul and Batman begins, you know? No, I don't because I didn't see the film. Well, Dave, you probably should. It's, it's quite a good film. It's got Christian Bale. He's Batman. And there's like two sequels to it. All right. Well, let's get on with these spoilers. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. So this past week, Daily Mail has shared pictures that appear to have been taken on or near the set and appear to reveal some potential characters and actors. Now, some other potential spoilers have come through as updates to the cast and crew on the film's IMDb page. As a note, IMDb pages are user-submitted, just like Wikipedia, so while there can be useful information, it does have the potential to change and should realistically be taken with a grain of salt. Now, for example, it is our understanding that our intern Frank could just make an IMDb account and write that he was in the movie. I mean, that would be a real shame if our intern Frank were to do that, huh, Dave? Oh, absolutely. And if intern Frank did somehow do that, we would be sure to punish him thusly for his egregious abuse of IMDb's terms and conditions. You hear that, Frank? You better not somehow get your name added to Weird the Al Yankovic Story on IMDb. All right, well, if any of our listeners choose to peek at spoilers or rumors, I think it's important to remember that this film is a parody biopic. I mean, I think when we're looking at this film, we need to throw all logic and reality out the window. You know, from the spoiler pictures and rumors that I've seen so far, this movie seems to make no sense. It is going to be insane, and I absolutely love it. It is going to be pretty stinking majestic. We can already tell. Now, in other weird The Al Yankovic story news, the March 7th, 2022 issue of People magazine has a picture of Daniel Radcliffe, which appears to be taken on or near the set of the film. In the picture, Daniel is wearing a Hawaiian shirt, a curly wig, and a mustache, and closely resembles the classic Weird Al look. However, it should be noted that Daniel is not wearing glasses in the picture. Now that, paired with the fact that Daniel's holding a cell phone in one hand and a drink in the other, well, that seems to indicate that the picture was taken during a break in filming. And in case you can't remember what classic Weird Al looks like, next to the picture of Daniel, there is a picture of classic Weird Al, complete with mustache and glasses. We're not completely sure why People Magazine didn't print that exclusive photo they shared on their website last week, and we're also not really sure why they referred to the film as Weird the Weird Al Yankovic story. It's always a shame when our news team, and by that we mean our intern Frank, does a better job at fact checking than a respected journalistic institution such as People Magazine. In other news, Weird Al's pal Thomas Lennon recently appeared on the Late Show with Stephen Colbert to talk about the brand new season of Reno 911. The subject of Weird Al came up, and Stephen asked Thomas how he and Weird Al became friends. Tom goes on to tell a story of how they met in an office supply store, and, hmm, didn't that story sound a little bit familiar to you, Dave? That story sure did, because it's the same exact story that Tom told at Weird Al's Hollywood Star Ceremony. Well, at least we know he's keeping his story straight. And speaking of the new season of Reno 911, it is now streaming for free on the Roku channel. And we're so excited because Weird Al is set to reprise his role of Ted Nugent, a.k.a. The Nuge. So you're going to want to check out Reno 911 for sure. Well, we have a few updates to share about the Weird Al's Museum of Natural Hilarity Pinball Machine. Yes, so orders finally opened on Monday, and just six hours later, the company Multimorphic announced that the limited edition pinball machine kits, which were limited to just 227, were completely sold out. That is absolutely amazing how fast they sold out. But they did say, if you missed it, to email them, and they will put your name on a waiting list just in case any of the buyers drop out. For anyone looking to pick up a machine of their own, the standard edition kit and base unit is listed for a combined total of $11,300 and is still available to order as of the recording of this episode. Now, the sold out limited edition add-on costs an additional $1,800 for a combined total of $13,100. Ooh! 
We also got some additional information last week when Weird Al and Multimorphic shared the official promotional video. Among many fun references to Weird Al and UHF, the machine will feature 17 classic songs, although you may be surprised at the collection of songs that are included. Songs include Fun Zone, Like a Surgeon, UHF, White and Nerdy, and Mission Statement. Plus Weasel Stomping Day, Sports Song, You Make Me, Germs, Dare to be Stupid, and Amish Paradise. As well as Word Crimes, My Bologna, I'll Sue Ya, Harvey the Wonder Hamster, Traffic Jam, and Hardware Store. The website also mentions there are over 2,000 custom callouts recorded by Weird Al. And now, Dave, they obviously took inspiration from our podcast coming up with the number of custom callouts. I mean, I think that's obvious. 2,000 custom callouts has to be influenced by Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. Now, I'm really looking forward to seeing more of this pinball machine because I really hope there's even more fun, nerdy, deep cut references in the play field and in the videos and stuff. I cannot wait to see what they have come up with. Yeah, the video that they posted so far, the machine looks incredible. I cannot wait to get that machine in front of me and start playing some Weird Al pinball. Now, in unfortunate news, we are sad to report the passing of a magic and comedy legend, the amazing Jonathan. Not only was the amazing Jonathan a guest on the Weird Al show, but we were told by Joel Miller during his interview that the amazing Jonathan was also a guest at Weird Al's personal bachelor party. Now, we had reached out to Jonathan's wife, Anastasia, about two years ago to see if he was up for doing interviews, but unfortunately, she let us know that he was no longer doing interviews in his retirement. We also asked her if he ever talked about playing paintball at Weird Al's bachelor party, and she said she had not heard about that, but she mentioned that their joint bachelor, bachelorette party, was at the Double Down Saloon with a select group of friends, and while it didn't have paint, there was a lot of fake blood and a slip and slide. That sounds like a really wild bachelor, <laughs> bachelorette party. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Now, I've always been a fan of The Amazing Jonathan ever since I was a kid, and I was really lucky and very happy to have had the opportunity to actually see him a couple years ago with my dad. Oh, how cool. You know, when I was younger, I used to faithfully watch the late night stand-up comedy show Comic Strip Live on Fox. Now, The Amazing Jonathan, he was a regular on the show, and I have many fond memories of him and all the inventive and hilarious magic tricks that I got to see him perform. The Amazing Jonathan will truly be missed. There's no one quite like him. From all of us here at Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast, Gil and Chill in Peace, The Amazing Jonathan. All righty, let's get right into this week's interview. Dave and I are thrilled to be once again joined by the keyboardist in Weird Al's band. He's been part of the Weird Al band since 1991. We know him best as... El Maestro. Please welcome Ruben Valtiera. How's it going, Ruben? Oh, my, 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 my gentlemen, gentlemen. How nice <laughs> to hear you guys. How nice to be speaking to you. Please, please, please. The El Maestro thing. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm a humble servant. I'm a humble servant. I, I, don't, I, I don't want these accolades, these well-deserved accolades. These, <laughs> I, I, it's, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm used to being uh, the unrecognized talent of the entire show, but it's all right. <laughs> I'm I'm a supporting <laughs> supporting character. It's just like a comedic sidekick. I'm fine with it. It's just like oh please, El Maestro, no, let it go, let it go. <laughs> anyway, enough about enough about me talking about me. Now, what do you guys think? About me? <laughs> well, I, I just have to say, El Maestro really is a a great title for you because you do go above and beyond. Not only with the Weird Al stuff, but you're a very talented keyboardist and musician. So I, I would not put down that title at all, Ruben. Well, you know, the thing is, is that in all seriousness, uh, as bad, as terrible as the whole situation with the COVID and stuff, you know, was, um, the thing is, is that I took the opportunity to be able to actually go in and uh, make some people happy, but, you know, at the same time, keeping my sanity by broadcasting, doing the two hours, you know, every night for basically two years. 
you know, Amazing, and yeah. having the having the uh, red light on, you know, and knowing <laughs> that people were listening, it just really strengthened my musicianship. And uh, I'm very, very happy about that. It really fulfilled me. And at the same time, it's uh, very interesting. And I, I wasn't surprised, but it's very cool to hear so many of the Al fans actually coming up and saying, we had no idea that you played like this, you know, because they've just been used to me, you know, just basically taking a pie in the face, <laughs> and, and, you know, you know, yuck, 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 pie in the face and then seltzer, you know, it's like, I'm, right. I'm, I might as well be in a Warner Brothers cartoon with Daffy Duck, you know, it's, you know what I mean? And, and, and all these people, they had no idea. And, and to be able to do that, then suddenly, you know, suddenly it was, uh, I was uh, being, well, you know, it was, it was, there was a lot of love. I was feeling a lot of love, you know, that I hadn't before, you know, and, and just knowing, and it made me feel real good that they, they could actually hear what I really do. I think what's really great about it is, at least for me, you know, I'm a, as we all, I think, can, can surmise, a, a big Weird Al fan, but I don't think I would have necessarily intentionally gone to look for Latin music or Latin piano, but having the opportunity of getting to see you perform it it's like wow this is a type of music i would have never sought out myself because i just didn't know any better and it's fantastic yeah you know thank you and, and the thing is is that uh, it made a lot of people happy and it it opened up a lot of people's ears and uh you know exposed them to different kinds of stuff i mean there's a lot of people when you say jazz they they get scared. They think it's, oh, it's like, you know, they, I have to think about it or something. And the thing is, is that I was doing a lot of stuff where, you know, there were recognizable melodies to a to a cool beat. Yeah. And the ladies loved it, you know, because when I do the thing, when I do the, the, the VLO thing, the Latin orchestra thing, um, uh, you know, just it's a bunch of women. You know, <laughs> just going nuts because uh -huh. they, they dig the grooves, you know. And as you saw the broadcasts, um they were, it was, it's a ton of women, you know, and then, and then they turned into the army of the Rubinettes, you know, right. <laughs> and, then, and then a certain, certain uh, sweet people came in, uh, a, a young lady named Shalimar uh, went in and started like making t-shirts and people <laughs> were ordering them. And, you know, it's like, and now we're, we're my web guy is uh, helping me brand the Valtiera name. And where we've got the website getting ready to go, and, and there's going to be merchandising. We're monetizing all sorts of stuff. It's almost kind of <laughs> well, well. I won't go there, but uh, you know, um, I'm I'm very interested. Actually, I've 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 lost interest in going out and driving to gigs, you know, and having to come back at like two o'clock in the morning. You know, and having to face the other car's headlights. I'm not, it's like, sorry, it's like those days have come and gone. Yeah. And and it's dangerous out there. And if, you know what, if I can actually stay at home and do what I've been doing and then actually monetize it, you know, I'm I'm happy with staying home. It would force me to like put out have like put out new songs um and, and and learn new songs all the time so you know i wouldn't want to keep playing the same old same old rehashed stuff for for people and and so and it's like i don't want to do a tip jar we're, we're trying to figure out a different way basically kind of like a kind of like a subscription thing but mm -hmm. then i'll be also putting on live performances with my group you know here in the rehearsal studio and if you haven't seen the group live it's just it's just completely different people there's been a couple of uh, of uh, sweet people who have made the trek from around the state to actually see us do the live thing, and they're always, you know, they they're always beaming after, after the wow, show. So great. so it's it's all been good, but now it is time to get back to the other dimension, which is <laughs> the dimension of Yankovic. And I, so I stopped in the broadcast <laughs> about two weeks ago, and I've just been. I've been uh, I, I've been uh, just studying the the Al stuff and tweaking everything, and you know what? Um, we're not doing as many songs as we did before. We're not doing that rotation thing of, of like five hundred and forty songs. 
know. <laughs> right. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> before it was like a different cover song every single night. Well, there's a different cover song every night, but but at the same time, uh, he had like 540 songs that we were doing rotations of. I mean, just <laughs> his originals. And now we're we're not we're not doing anywhere near that many. I think it's 539. Right, right. <laughs> and, yeah. Anyway, no. The thing is, you see, he's uh, it was like 60 before around there. Of course, Bermuda would would tell you the exact number because that's what Bermuda does. Um, but uh, where is Bermuda on your body, Dave Rossi? <laughs> where is he Bermuda on your body? Is on my, he's on my right ankle, he's on, on your the right inside ankle. of my right ankle. Yeah, it's like, and the thing is, I still remember when Dave like said, you know, I, I'd certainly like to get your tattoo here on me. And I'm like looking <laughs> at, at his body and there's, there's no space left. Oh, I know where you put me. See, I've got a spot picked out just for you, Ruben. All you've got to do is give the okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you, Dave Rossi. That's just a little too weird. <laughs> I mean, come on. The, thank you, no, please walk away. Anyway, so, so the thing is, is that uh, we're, we're doing... Uh, you know, and the thing is, is that uh, this is this is not any secret sort of knowledge or for, for you know, uh, a need to know kind of thing. But the thing is, is that uh, if we cut the amount of songs that we have in half, which he has, and just kept the ones that really worked, then instead of like, I mean, the band is going to be that much more powerful, you know, because right. the other way, it's like we do a song and then maybe two weeks later we play it again. And it's like, right. if you're playing the song like every night, of course, it's just going to be a complete powerhouse, no matter what it is. If you play it every other couple of nights, it'll be good. But if you play it once every two weeks, you know, it's, 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 it's not going to be as powerful. You know what I'm trying to say? I get what you're saying. But also, we've seen you guys, you know, on the last tour, and you guys rocked every song. I know, but imagine if we were <laughs> like playing these songs more frequently and it's just like, then you're not really thinking, you're not thinking of the song so much and trying to, because I've got a lot of parts and a lot of moves that I have to make, you know, put your hand over here, step over here, hit this button, blah, blah, blah. It's not about just playing melodies and stuff. It's a, that I got to do a program change here, program change there, move this slider over here, do this, you know, so, so. There's so much to think about, and when it can just get to the place where it's just um, muscle memory, and you're just you're hearing yeah. the song, and the song is just flowing, and you're not having to think about anything right. except for putting your passion and your heart into it, and then when the fans hear that and they scream even louder, <laughs> you know, and it just makes you go attack the next song just as strongly so i'm very i'm very much looking forward to this it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of fun with the set list changing around so much on a tour like this uh i mean it's been advertised as no two set lists are gonna be the same is that confusing to you do you prefer to get in a rhythm like on the strings attached tour where you do know like this song comes after this song and, and something like that? Or do you think that detracts from the power? Well, the thing is, is that we used to do the uh, the uh, set set lists, you know, um, back in the day. And then at when we did the longer tours, we actually approached Al and said, you know, it'd be really cool if we could like do some alternate songs, if we could just mix it up a little because yeah. then it, or else it turns into Groundhog Day. And then people kind of get sick of it, no matter, even though the audience is going nuts, we kind of get sick of it. We want to do something a little different. And as you know, it's everything is so tight and so choreographed. And that's yeah. what makes Al's show so great. I mean, but Al is that kind of a performer where he's very scripted and he sticks to the script. As you know, I mean, there's no banter, there's no chatter, there's no this or that. You know, uh, Drew Carey supposedly asked him many times to go on Whose Line Is It Anyway? You know, oh, really? Friends. And Al yeah. said no because he he did he was not comfortable with improv. Wow. He's not he's not comfortable with improv. He is great scripted. Right. And he's, and he's, he's just he's just very, very good. And so that's the way the shows were. But, you know, we said no, if we could just change it a little. So we started changing it. 
and then having alternates. And then when we went to the orchestral thing, we couldn't really do that. So we stuck to the same set list. But the tour before then, we had a different set list every night. We were rotating through about 60 songs. And so, and, and it's like, that was great, except, like I said, if <laughs> some of these songs, well, some of these songs he was thinking weren't as, as strong as others. I won't make mention of, the, of what they were, it just but what, well, uh, because it's not important. But the thing is, is that those songs he wouldn't play for like about. Well, I'm not going to put that one in tonight, you know. And it would be backed up to for about two weeks, and so you played the song two weeks ago, and then you're going to play it tonight, and it's like, um, right? It's not right under your fingers anymore. It's not part of your muscle memory anymore. You really right. have to think, and then you're not really attacking it as hard as you can. And so that's why I'm looking forward to us not doing it. You know, I'm sorry, I'm beating a dead horse, you know, but <laughs> I'm, just, I'm saying the same thing over and over again, which is what I do. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, well, on something like, you know, the ridiculously self-indulgent, ill-advised vanity tour or the upcoming unfortunate return of the ridiculously self-indulgent, ill-advised vanity tour. It's easy you know, for it you does, to say. <laughs> yeah, easy for me to say. Absolutely. It, it rolls right off the tongue. So uh, in something like that, though, d does Al have – it seems like he has a lot more room to kind of improvise, you know, in between songs. Do you see that more on that kind of tour where he does do a little more improvising, a little more playing with the audience? I don't know what he's go going to do. I, uh, the thing is, is that he's, he, he's kind of, he's not gregarious in that way. He's not, I mean, he'll act goofy and stuff like that, you know, just to do it. But he's, he, he you know, he's, he's shy. I mean, as crazy as he seems, he he is a, a shy and a, a, a humble cat, you know, and it's and it's it's very charming. It can be very charming, but the thing is, is that uh, he won't go out and uh, out on a limb and just like do just small talk and this and that. But when he does, and I encourage it, I keep telling him he should. When he does, I mean, he's you all know that he's he's one of the brightest people that you've ever met. Yeah. He's one of the oh, sharpest sure. people. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, and you can see actually the evolution. If you look back at a, a, a compilation of, uh, you know, TV interviews, you know, on talk shows and stuff, um, you can see that uh, when you give him, when like Craig Ferguson, you know, just was, it was unscripted and he wasn't asking stupid questions like, hey, what's your favorite gummy bean and gummy bear flavor or something like that? Or I hear you like juju bees. Do you like juju bees or juju fruits or juju fruits better? When they're not asking him questions like that and they're just like throwing, I mean, he and Craig were just like going at it back and forth. And it's like Al was right there keeping with, up with Craig. It was, it was amazing. It was great. I wish. I wish more people could see that because he just is so bright, so smart. So you thought that uh, the, the Bermuda is like Al's biggest cheerleader? No, I'm Al's biggest cheerleader. <laughs> I, well, the thing is, I told I told the guys on the bus back in '92. You know, I made mention while I was there, and I made mention. I said, Al, I believe I I want to stay here because I believe Al is going to Al is going to be one of the biggest stars, you know, and he's going to be a legend because he, because after I saw his work ethic and the way that he delivered on stage, I said, this guy is going to be big. You know, he's not going to be a flash in the pan because he's so smart and it's been his work ethic. And of course, uh, Bermuda had to chime in and, and, and go, you know, it's like I was kissing his butt. You know? <laughs> but the thing is, was I wrong? You're right. Was I wrong? You were right. I oh. was. I'm completely right. He's a living legend, and the thing is, he delivers every night. Yeah. I've seen him be sick as a dog and still get up on stage and just slam. You know, where it's just like, where I, I would have just said no, I, I canceled. I mean, I mean, look at. You know, it's like I, I I don't I mean it in the most positive sense, but when his when his uh, lovely parents you know passed away, yeah, it's like I, and they phoned us the next morning. I thought that the the tour was was being canceled, right? And and they and they said no, 
he he just for at first they said no he doesn't want anybody to lose any work oh you know? wow amazing yeah that's like that's my boss and that's what i tell people that i go that's how i'll yank it. yeah you know and and i and and he wow. he and of course you have to work through your pain and stuff it's best to do that rather than just cancel but but he did it and he was always perfect and he was flawless yeah, I am his cheerleader because I I know, I see I know what great talent is, and and he is great talent, and I'm, I'm very happy to be here. So yes, I'm kissing, but but I'm speaking the <laughs> truth. Um, I phoned him. I phoned him like a year later after all that, you know, and I and I said, dude, how did how did you do that? How were you able to do that? You know, go on stage every night. And he said, you know, he told me, well, I uh, I would do the show, and then I just went back to my room, and I would cry. Wow. Mm-hmm. And that's 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 Al, you know. So so the thing is, is that yeah, mine is big cheerleader, the biggest cheerleader because he he deserves it. Yeah. You know, and then, and it makes me it really does piss me off when when I hear other people just like, oh, is he still around? Or, oh, does he have a band? You know, that kind of stuff. It's like, he's got a better band. He's He's got a better performance or he's got a better show than any of the stuff that you go see. Yeah. You know, oh, for sure, you. yeah. And and that's and that's why I, I love the, uh, the Al audiences. You know, the Al audiences, they're, they're very smart. They've got a lot of taste, you know, and, they, and, and they're, they're very hip. And they're very sweet people. And so the thing is, but like I said, they, they got a lot of taste. They don't listen to that crap. <laughs> you know? Am I going too far? You can edit this out, right? No, this is gold, Ruben. We're keeping all of this. <laughs> well, I told you, there's a reason, you know, there's a, there's a reason I'm the adult portion of the Al show. <laughs> <laughs> the other guys are all very, very, very great players, but they're just they're just not as idiotic as <laughs> they don't bring the show like I can. Uh, more questions? Go ahead, ask. Sure. Them. So, so yeah, you, you brought up the audience, and let me ask you about you know feeding off the fans and the fans cheering in like a concert setting, like you've been in versus you know something that you've been doing for the past two years over Zoom. How does that? How does the fan interaction? How is that different, and how does that change how you perform? Well, that's that's I mean that's obvious, but at the same time, that's part of the reason that uh, we're doing the thing. We're actually recording this the way that uh, um, that we're recording right now because uh, before we would have had latency and I can't work off of it's much more fun to work off of you guys than the back and forth you know as opposed to you know the latency you know a couple of seconds I don't know whether <laughs> what I said was funny <laughs> you know right so you guys right. are laughing like five minutes later well that's what I have during the broadcasts actually uh, and somehow I was actually still able to uh, keep a conversation or keep my shtick going or whatever, even though the people were, uh, they were, you know, responding, but I wouldn't see the response till a minute later, you know. Wow. I remember so that, I just yeah. Had, yeah, I just had to guess and just sort of like assure myself or be assured that <laughs> they're hearing it, it's working, and people, and it got to the point actually where people knew when I was going to finish a song and they would actually, you know, insert the uh, applause emojis and stuff like that before <laughs> I finished the song. And, and I actually told them to do that. And um, no, so, so that when I finished it, you would see the applause like right then rather than a minute later. And so, yeah. so it made it nice. But I, you know, like I said, uh, no, uh, the, the immediate response with the broadcast was, uh, I didn't do it. I look. I, I didn't do it to see anybody's applause. I just I just did it to be able to play, and then I knew that mm-hmm. I was making people happy. Yeah. So that's why I was doing it. With the Al thing, yeah. it's different. I'm there. I'm part of his group, but they're all going nuts for him. You know. Do you- and and that's the truth. And he deserves it. So so and and when they when they're going nuts, it just makes you play even harder. It it is. It, it's a great thing, you know. 
when you are up there with Al, do you get a chance to take in the audience and see the people, you know, um, waving their arms for Amish Paradise and that kind of stuff? Or are you just really... Oh, sure. You get to take it in? Sure. Yeah. Sure. And then when we used to do uh, the thing, the cell phones thing, you know, oh, years yeah. ago. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and all right. the whole place would light up and it's, 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 it's very cool. Um, I, rem- I think that... Um, I think that the major agency, what was it? What's the name of that? I can't think of it. Philip Morris was there. You know, they had been invited to come, you know, check out the Al show. Um, they wanted to see what it was about before they went in and, uh, you know, uh, took him on. I think you mean William Morris. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, right, right. right. <laughs> Phil Morris is uh, yeah, tobacco guy. I'm dating, I'm, I'm dating myself. Uh, let's see. Let's see. So they were there, and uh, we and we went into cell phones, and they just went, "Oh my god," you know. But of course, they were they were still knocked out by the rest of the concert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's when we were uh, when we were all we were just slamming hard. We had been on the road for the short period of the the very short period of like I think about three months, and now we're getting ready to do. Six months. I know. Straight. <laughs> I think we looked at it. And it... I haven't finished. Okay. I haven't finished. Okay. <laughs> Six months straight with Emo Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody laughs when I say Emo Phillips. And they go, that must be so much fun. And then I go, I repeat it. And I go, Six months. <laughs> straight on the bus we don't get to go home and emo is sitting there across from you for six months straight see now it's not now it's not funny now there's beads of perspiration forming on your forehead because you're starting to get terrified see I know, I know this, you know, and and you have nothing to be afraid of. You all you need to be scared of is me. Whether I'm going to be able to last through this thing without going completely nuts and throwing myself <laughs> off of the bus off of a bridge, you know. I'll say it again: six months straight. Okay. Now it's sounding tragic, isn't it? Anyway. Well, I, I believe, like looking at, at some of the other tours, this may be the one that is six months, the most, the longest <laughs> tour, the most number of shows without a break. Yep. And the thing is, you know, it's like maybe it like it's like it's like it's like reversed. It's it's been flipped on its head. We should have been doing this when we were in our twenties or thirties. Right. Right. <laughs> and we should be doing less shows as we're older. And now. <laughs> And now that I'm like 143 years old, of course, if I'm 143, oh my God, I'm thinking of Steve J. I don't think numbers go that high, right? I think I think when he puts down his age, it's like he just puts in an infinity symbol. That's 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 what it is. Oh, but we love Steve, <laughs> and he loves me. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, of course, I can't, I can't wait to get on the tour. I no, I, I really am looking for it. The crazy thing though is like I've lost all my um I've lost all my creative stuff. Um and I was telling people this during the broadcast, and I tell my friends this too, because my mind just goes, I'm I'm not a good multitasker. I'm either doing this or I'm doing that. I can't do both. So the jazz and all and the Latin and creative the creative stuff, the the, the the melodies that I come up with, you know, while improving you know, split second while I'm composing, you know, uh, I mean, you know, within a split second, you know, all that stuff is gone. Right now, it's all about getting the owl stuff completely memorized. And these, so, so I'm, I'm like waking up in the morning with these songs going through my head, you know, like an endless loop. Mm. Um, so, so it's like, I, I, man, you better, you better, 
You better have a straight jacket ready for me because I'm starting to get crazy already. <laughs> but that's a good thing. You're, you, you know, you're you're getting it in your your blood. It's in your system. When you're on a tour for six months with Emo Phillips, I've never with, been on a tour for six months <laughs> with Emo. With Phillips. Emo. <laughs> Are you still practicing when you're out on tour? And, and and not just this tour, but I mean just in general. Or is it just the the amount of shows you're doing? Is that the practice? Well, practicing for what? Practicing my own personal stuff? Or practicing just to keep my fingers warmed up? Or practicing yeah, the like Al songs? The Al songs. No, I'm not practicing the Al songs. I want to get away from those as, as much as I can. Yeah. It's like, I'm telling you, <laughs> I wake up thinking about them. I hear them in my head. You know, I wake up hmm. and, and it's... And and uh, the rest of the guys do too. I asked them, and I say, "Oh yeah, you know, the, you know, the songs are just going through." And, the, and it's in a way you want them to because you don't want to think about the songs. You just want it to flow. Yeah. You know, you just right. want it to flow, and then you you basically you know just ramp up the heat on them and you know really attack them, and you don't think about oh it goes to the this section here that goes to that section there. No, it just flows into itself. I actually want to um, like listen to the vocals more. And instead of following just the charts in my head mm -hmm. and the chord symbols in my head that are flowing by, I want to hear, I want to pay attention to the lyrics now and much more <laughs> for as goofy as they are. But, but, <laughs> and those, the lyrics will prompt me to go to the next place. And I won't even think about what the next place is. I'll just know that it's the next place and my hands will go there. My brain will go mm. to the next mm. place. And I don't even think about what it is. It just goes there, you know? Yeah. So am I, am I going too much? No, I, I'm, good. I'm really curious about the rehearsal process. When you are just at home now, when you're rehearsing, how does that work? Are you listening to a track? Are you just playing the music, just your part? Well, it depends on how deep you want to go. The thing is, is that I've got everything, I've got everything scored out, you know. Um, every every part that I do is scored out. Every program change, every, every you know, say, where I say, uh, do this with your right hand, do this with your left hand, go up here, go down here, hmm. turn over here, you know, press this button, get ready to start, and you put your hand over this button, get ready to press, because wow. I have to, make program changes in a millisecond man come on give me a break i love i love the guys but give me a break a drummer hits things you know a bass player hits one note at a time thump thump the guitar player goes strum 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 ruben is here like i gotta do okay i gotta do this thing here and i gotta do this line over here and then i gotta do this thing here which takes three hands i've done things that take three hands people couldn't do unless they had three hands i I, I worked it out technically so that I, I programmed it in so it would only take two hands to pull off wow. what people could only do with yeah. three hands. I swear to God. And I'm just doing all this crazy stuff. And then let's talk about when it's when it's there. You need the sound of a cow. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm being completely serious. Where do you put the cow sound? I... Right. <laughs> What key? Yeah. What key? What key do you put the 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 this, the 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 cow? How about this? Even better yet, what key do you put the dog sound on? <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm being completely serious. Do you put it on A for arf? <laughs> I'm being completely serious. Do you put it on D for dog? dog. <laughs> B for bark. Right? B for bark. Exactly. C for canine. So this, right. So so this is so so. <laughs> There's dirty stuff in there. I won't go there. Okay. Um, but, but this is exactly... So this is why I'm telling you that, you know, my mind has to completely switch over to to the other side where I'm not thinking in terms of melody. But so so the thing is, you know what I do, actually? The first sample might be the dog. The second sample would be a cow. You know, how about a horse? Uh -huh. You know, it's like, a, what would you put that on H? Wait a minute, there's no H. You know, there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, <laughs> right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, there's no, so what you do is you put a sample at the bottom of the keyboard. The first sample is at the bottom of the keyboard. 
the next sample that you would hit. It doesn't matter what it is, you just make it the next key, and then you just keep going up. You have to think about that, you know. Um, and and so so the thing is is that I'm pra I'm working and taking apart all sorts of stuff at home, and then you know Al may want to do it in a different key. How do I play it to a different key? Well, you know what I do? I take I'll take the song on YouTube, and then fly it into Logic. You know what Logic is, right? Yeah. It's on Pro Tools. Fly it into Logic. You transpose it up half a step. It'll transpose the audio. It'll keep the the tempo the same. But it transposes the audio up a half step. And then you render that, you bounce that, you render it into an MP3. And then I play the MP3 and it's playing in the key that um, you're supposed to be playing with. And that's that's the way I am. Like, that's why I'm like kidding around about the rest of the guys. Drummer hits things, you know, the bass player's just going <laughs> thump, guitarist is going this, but I'm having to jump through all these hoops. And so, yeah, you know what, when they call me El Maestro, and it's like, yeah, I'll take it because cause this job is not easy, <laughs> you know. But anyway, so so there's my there's my complaint. You can edit all of that out. How's that? So when but when you actually sit down, when you when you're not figuring out that sort of stuff that you you just took us through, are you listening to <laughs> Al's <laughs> vocals? Are you listening to Bermuda's drums and Steve's bass and Jim's guitar, or are you playing your part? with no other sound input in your headphones, just when you're home. The thing is, is we've, we've already played these songs. So it's just like, it's a matter of going back in. The hard part is going back in and trying to go through all my files and try to find the, the program that is, you know, the, the combination of programs and the patch changes, the patch chain of programs that are, you know that that that's about that song that is for that song yeah and to see if it still works you know because you know the the drag is is to which i did go through where you save everything at the end of the tour and you say okay here's the entire file of everything at the last day of the tour and it was all tweaked and you got it because you may have to open it up in three years or something when he does the tour again <laughs> right you know <laughs> and you load it in and it goes error <laughs> oh. oh no yeah, and it did it, and uh, I had to go. Uh, I had to drive down to LA because you know that I'm north of San Francisco. You know, I'm supposed to be retired, right. but they just keep bringing me back. <laughs> they just keep it. It's like no, there's young guys that'll do this. No, no, there's no, there's nobody that will humiliate themselves, you know, <laughs> enough to do this gig. You know, it's just you, Mr. Pie in the Face, comedic sidekick. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not even a has been. I'm, not, I'm a never was been. Um, I made that up. But the thing is, I had to drive, drive down to L.A. to actually grab another keyboard, my spare keyboard, and bring it back up here because I knew that the programs were in that thing. Wow. And and, wow. and so I was very very lucky to get everything back. So so I get everything in place. I make sure they're working right, and then I'll put on like the song, and I'll just play along to the song, yeah. and make sure that I'm in the right place, and that I'm hitting the right, I'm triggering the right things, and triggering the samples, and you know, it's like, like you know, you're playing piano, and then then there's a double lead guitar thing going on, and I have to go up to the second keyboard and play that line with Jim, you know, and then the next thing there'll be you know there'll be Christmas chimes, and so I, I've I've got it all. You know, mapped out so that you know I move my hand over or down a couple of notes, and there's the ch this Christmas chimes, you know, and and uh, and then there might be a bomb, you know, if you were if we're talking <laughs> about you know the night Santa went crazy, right, right. Uh, now you guys, how how many years? When was your first concert? Look, I'm I'm doing the interview. Now. <laughs> um, <laughs> when was your first concert? My first concert was in 1992. July 11, 1992, off the deep end. Dave, I thought that your first concert was back in like 19, like 1981 or something, because I've seen, <laughs> I've seen the tattoos. The tattoos are so old. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even look like the guys because they've all already stretched and this. And, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but, but um, let's see. So after all these years, my point was, is of, of seeing it, you guys don't consider it really a comedy show anymore. I mean, you guys know how strong the band is. 
you guys know that this band, we can put this band up against any other band around, and we play their songs better than they do. I'm sorry to I'm sorry <laughs> to go there, but it's just like no, go there. Tell me if I'm tell me if I'm wrong because you're proud of the band, aren't you? So let me just say, February fourth, two thousand was my first show. Hmm. I definitely am not going to thirty Weird Al shows this year to experience a comedy show. I'm definitely going because I love the music. And I mean, the comedy cool. is, is a bonus to me, but yeah, it's a music right. show to me. It's it's not, I guess I'm too deep for it to be a comedy show, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, you've, you've grown up with, I mean, the, 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 the comedy, you already know the joke, you know. It's like listening to a comedy record over and over. So you already know the joke, you don't laugh in as hard. But the music is still powerful. The music is still great, and it gets better. All the time. Oh yeah. The, the you know I'm very proud to play with these guys. These guys these guys are really the best. You know when I mean, Jim you know is now a world renowned you know um, Hawaiian slack key guitarist. I mean he's he's got major chops and John you know can do can do everything. Steve is you know very Steve is solid. Yeah. And and John and John just he knows the songs inside and out as he's supposed to. But he's he's dedicated to it, and dedicated to to playing, you know, putting on as good of a show as possible. Um, how are we doing? Are we are we doing good? Hey, fans, are you still with us? <laughs> I might be I might be going too deep for some of the fans. I don't know. No, this is no, this, this is, is what we want. This great, is exactly yes. what we want. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. I'm 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 happy to be here. I'm happy to be anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ruben, I, I would really like to uh, share something with you. Really? This is a family show. Keep your pants <laughs> up. Go on. So we, we had a really... No. Oh, you're going to show me Dave Rossi's tattoos again. No, Please. no, no. No. We had a, 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 a really fantastic artist, Andre Munoz Sets, created a piece of art for us that features you... And I don't know oh, if you've ever no. seen it, and I'd love to send it to you and get your reaction. Oh God! All right. <laughs> which which leads me to still, you know, the speculation of who's, you know, they obviously have to have the band in the Weird Al biopic, you know, the movie. All right. So who who is going to be playing me? I heard that they tried to dig up the corpse of John Belushi. <laughs> except that it fell apart in their hands and it was gross so, oh. so forget that and then of course you saw my picture of Danny Trejo you know the Mexican <laughs> <Right. bullet. laughs> we're still trying still trying to figure out maybe it'll be Wilmer Valderrama he's such a <laughs> good man. nah not him are you kidding dream on Ruben no, I'll probably get Walter Brennan or something <laughs> Anyway, anyway, Contine Flaws, Risen from the Dead. Go on, go on. <laughs> well, who is your top choice to play Ruben in the weird, the Al Yankovic story film? Who's my top choice? Um, I hadn't really thought about it. I mean, con just choices, you know, just to be funny was like I was thinking, yeah, Belushi or or Janie Trejo or, or uh, the other guy. What's his... Uh, uh, the guy who played Che Guevara in the um, in the movie. It was a two part movie. What's that guy's name? Um, a Benicio del Toro. You know? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm thinking of the the strangest looking guys. You know. Oh, hopefully they'll be merciful. I have no idea who they're going to. You know. And I haven't talked to Al. I know he's very busy. I I want to ask him about certain things. But you know what? After all these years, you know, about like uh, the songs and I want to change up some things. But after all these years, I've just learned, you know, just don't bother him. Just <laughs> really, because he's, he's just he's too busy. He's on the set right now, you know, with uh, I think I'm going to I wonder if he's going how he's going to react when I start calling him Daniel. Like Daniel <laughs> or, or if I start calling him, hey, Harry Potter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna see, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> report but, back. You know, I, I, I won't be able to talk to him that much because emo will be in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's, here's emo. You ready? So emo gets off the bus. The first, the first stop on the tour when we, when we had him before. You know, 
He's brilliant. He's great. But he gets out. He's just not roadworthy. Okay. He gets off the bus and we all grab our stuff, you know, from the bay and run into the hotel, you know, to get as much sleep as we can. And he gets off the bus and, um, and has his, uh, he, he's like, he's looking at the driver and the driver's looking at him. He's looking at the driver and the driver's looking at him. And then he would look at the bay and look at his luggage and then look at the driver. <laughs> and then he'd look at the luggage again and look back at the driver and the driver's going, what the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> He's like, well, aren't you going to get my bag? <laughs> and the driver's like, you know, slam the door and just took off. <laughs> you know? It's like, this is, it's like, Evo was like, what? I, I don't. I don't understand. You know, oh my God. Six months. Emo. Help. Anyway, I can't wait till I hear, you know, uh, uh, the reaction from the fans are going to tell Emo this is. Did you hear what Ruben said about you? <laughs> Here, fans, here it is. Emo is brilliant. He's hilarious. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you the truth. Um, when he's on the bus and he's just being himself, which is an interesting person, he's not the emo you see on stage. He's emo, but he's like darker. Oh. And we call oh. him evil emo. <laughs> and, he, and it's it's true. And 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 we go, dude, you gotta do the evil emo on, on stage. Do those jokes because some of the things he comes up with are brilliant but they're really dark and evil it's so great it's I would so love great to see i that. wish oh yeah you guys would love it you'd be wow. going evil emo evil emo <laughs> anyway so um so 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 um i don't know who's going to be listening to this I, mean, I, I have a i have a i gotta keep my mouth shut or else bermuda's gonna come back and get me <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ruben, if, if you could take a look. I sent you the artwork uh, that I'd love for you to react to live on, on the show. Why are you doing this? You just want you just want me to be sad, don't you? <laughs> you just want me to be sad. Okay, I'm going to look at it. I'm looking at the photo. All right, we're going to have to stop the interview right there. But don't you worry, because we'll pick up and we'll listen to the final half of our brand new interview with Ruben Valtiera on next episode in the meantime be sure to check out ruben's brand new website rubenvaltiera.com for all the latest news on ruben this episode is brought to you in part by discover darwin promoting tourism in darwin minnesota not only is historic darwin minnesota uh beautiful it's also walkable darwin minnesota is home to the mcleod and meeker celebrate women hike the walk starts this Saturday, March 5th at 9 o'clock a.m. Twine Ball Time at Darwin Dassel Park. The walk is sponsored by She Ascends, Minnesota Women's Hiking Group, and is free for She Ascends members and $15 for non-members. Walkers are asked to meet at Darwin Hill, and She Ascends requests that you bring a woman you want to celebrate. You may also want to bring comfortable shoes because the walk will be approximately two to three miles long. Now for our Canadian or international listeners who plan to fly into Darwin for the walk, that's approximately 3.22 to 4.83 kilometers. You know, Ethan, if I were going to Darwin to do this walk, I think I would tell people that I'm walking in kilometers. Oh, well, why is that? Uh, as far as I know, you're not Canadian nor international. Well, there's a very simple reason for that. 3.22 and 4.83 are much bigger than 2 and 3, respectively. So it just sounds more impressive. Can't argue with that. So visit Darwin, Minnesota on your next walking expedition. Discover Darwin more than just the twine ball. And after you visit Darwin, Minnesota, be sure to visit discoverdarwin.biz. Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast is brought to you absolutely free thanks to our incredible sponsors, Burrito Burrito, Discover Darwin, and Jackson Scoggins. Our podcast is also supported by everyone in our Patreon family, with special thanks to our amazing close personal friend level Patreon supporters, Allison, Frank from the Bank, Adriana, Zeb, Scott, 
UH Jeff, Javier, Kenneth, Jake, Blair, Jared, and also thanks to Joseph and everyone else in our pretty stinking majestic Patreon family. If you enjoy our family-friendly Wacky Weird Al podcast, please consider supporting us at patreon.com slash 2000inch. There are awesome benefits like getting your name on the podcast and access to secret episodes. Plus, you can learn how to become a sponsor of the podcast. And don't forget to check out our official merchandise over at shop.2000inch.com. Our fan favorite We Hate Intern Frank merchandise makes a great gift for National Banana Cream Pie Day. So get your orders in now. We love hearing from our listeners and other Weird Al fans. So join our Facebook community and post about Weird Al by visiting group.2000inch.com. And we also absolutely positively love it when we receive voicemail via our official 27-hour-a-day podcast hotline. Three, four, seven, spatula. You might even hear your message in a future episode. For everything about our podcast, including our incredible past episodes and guests, be sure to visit weirdalpodcast.com or 2000h.com. And while you're there, click on black and white and weird all over bonus episodes for our special bonus episode book series where author John Bermuda Schwartz walks us through his book page by page, picture by picture. Keep up on new episodes, podcast news, and events by following at 2000inch on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thank you for subscribing and leaving reviews on your favorite podcast app. Make sure you are subscribed because not only does it help the podcast, but it also promotes beard growth. Thank you once again to our guest, Ruben Valtiera. Also, thank you to Bob Groder, UH Jeff Nacera, Ajax, VideoForce.ca, and all the fine postal carriers at Canada Post. Thank you to the Grammy Award-winning Jim Kimo West for our incredible podcast theme song, and thank you to Weird Al Yankovic, as this podcast probably would not exist without him. And a big thanks to all of you, our listeners, subscribers, Patreon supporters, and sponsors, and everyone else who makes this podcast possible. Be sure to tune in next episode for the exciting and hilariously funny conclusion to our interview with Ruben Valtiera. Until next time, thank you for choosing Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast. And always remember to gill and chill. That was Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast. Episode 148-inch. Winner of the Excellence in Podcasting Award. You know, it's like I was kissing his butt.